Okay, today we're going to do a little bit of quick modeling uh, and we're going to make something like this. So test tube, stopper, test tube rack, and some fluid inside. Let's see how fast we can do this. So let's hide all this stuff. We're going to start just with a simple plane and make it one by one. So what we're going to work on is making the little dimple that will hold the test tube in place make this just a little bit bigger and to make that rather than cutting a hole in here or anything we're going to use our extrude tools so we'll select this one face R for scale hold down shift and extrude it in now this actually adds extra faces here it's kind of hard to tell but if I select this middle face and hold down shift and press greater than um, the the bracket above the period and then hold down shift and hit delete I'm deleting another large face that was originally there so now just that left with these five faces and if we hit three on the keyboard we can see everything rounds out and this central part rounds out pretty nicely too you could make this rounder if you wanted to if you had a couple more edges that you could circularize but uh, We'll just leave it like this. And now we're just going to duplicate this. So because I'm working in the middle of the world, if I just shift D and then hold down X, I can snap this. Then I can hit shift D again, and it will duplicate um, and use that same transform. But before I do that, I might as well just fix the inside. So I will turn on wireframe on shaded just so we can see this. And if I take this face here and do the same thing, R, Shift, Extrude, and move that down a little bit. And we've got our dimple. And we may want to extrude one more time and push that down a little bit too. And then if we want to make this a little bit sharper, we can select the edge going around here and put a bevel on there. Let's just reduce that. It, add one more segment so if we look at it in this mode it looks like this smooth you can see it's nicely rounded out now we'll do a better smooth on this later on but for now this is all we need to see so now we're going to go and duplicate this again so W shift D hold down X and just snap it this way now if I hit shift D again it will duplicate and use that last transform so do the same thing here, shift D, hold down X, and drag it out. Didn't use a transform that time because uh, the last thing in memory was this one being duplicated. But now if we hit shift D, it should do that for us. Okay, let's get rid of this grid for now. So now if we select all of these models and go to mesh combine, now they're a single model. And you can see that the polyplanes up here that we are creating have their transform nodes left. And if I select this object and delete its history, then all of that will disappear. So even though these are the same model, they're not actually connected yet. We can tell if we just click here, we can see that those aren't connected. Oh, I've got symmetry turned on. Let me turn that off. So we also have to go into vertex mode just grab all the vertices, shift, right click, and merge vertices, merge vertices. And there's a threshold, very low threshold, so it will only merge those ones that are sitting right on top of each other. So now if I click on this and move it up and down, you can see it's connected. If I hit three on the keyboard now, that's looking pretty good. So we're not going to keep it rounded off like this because we're going to extrude out the volume of this thing. So if I go into edge mode, I'm going to save my file. Just double click on this and it should go all the way around. Now if I hold down shift and just move down, it extrudes that out. just want to make sure I go under those dimples, so something like that. And now I have to connect these edges to close this off. So I'm going to select this edge, that edge. I'm holding down shift. And I could just hit bridge 
here. And it would work for me because I know what my settings are, but um, you can see there are no options to set here. <clears throat> so instead we can go to Edit Mesh Bridge and open the options. Just make sure it's set to linear type with zero divisions and bridge, and it should bridge across appropriately. Now it doesn't always, and you might have to go one at a time. Anyway, okay, so this is almost done. If we hit three, now you can see we've got the structural edges, but we don't have the support edges around the outer perimeter of this yet. So now we have to work on adding our support edges. And we'll do this for all the edges out on the perimeter at once. So I double click on that edge. It can't go all the way around because it doesn't know what direction to go in after that corner. So we just have to make sure we go in and select all the outer edges. And I'm going to select these corners too. Holding down shift and now I'll hit bevel, adjust the fraction to make it the chamfer smaller or bigger, then maybe add one segment. So we're up to two. Now if I hit three on the keyboard and turn off wireframe unshaded, you can see it's holding its shape. It's a little bit tight in here. I'd probably change that, but it's the same on all of them. Okay. This is a little bit low res here too, so that's why it's looking a little weak. So we could always actually put a real smooth on this. I'm not going to do this now because I want to use this for the top panel as well. Um, but let's just go take a look what it would look like if we did smooth it. So if we go to mesh smooth. Right, so that's with two divisions. And if we wanted to go up to more, we can change this to three and it will look a little bit better. It's still a little sharp edge. I made that initial bevel a little bit too sharp, I think. Anyway, that's okay. I don't have the history on that anymore. I deleted the history on that original plane, so I can't go back in. So I'm just going to undo back out of there so I don't have that curve or the smooth on here. So now um, I actually want to have a little space for the outer edge here to put a kind of post on. So let's do that. So I'm going to select these vertices and if I want to move this side at the same time I'm going to go to symmetry object X because I'm working in the X direction here. Now if I just move these ones out and we'll move those ones out too. So I just have a little more space here to put a small pillar. And turn that off. Save. Okay. So now let's make that pillar. We'll just make it out of some simple objects, a cylinder. So I'm going to roughly get it the right size, but I'm going to work in the middle of the world here. So that's pretty good size, maybe a little bit bigger. And now I want to work on this thing alone. So if I hit control one, it will isolate just this object. So I just want it to be a little bit tapered towards the top a bit. And then I want it to have an indentation here. So I'm going to delete the top faces. And then just extrude in these edges here. So just double click this edge. Hold down shift and extrude in. Hold down shift and go to W, hold down shift and move it in a little bit like this. And then I can move it in like this if I want to. I'm not going to see this part, so I can control right click and switch that selection to vertices. Shift right click and go to merge vertices. Turn up the distance. And now that's nice and closed off. So now just a little bit of beveling. So I'm going to bevel here, I'm going to bevel here, and I'll bevel here as well. Maybe I have two segments. So if we go into three mode, 
can see that it smooths out nicely. And we're never going to see the inside here, so I'm not too concerned with what it looks like here. Although I think I will bevel this inner edge just so it holds its shape a little bit more. For, so I have a, a, a more clearly uh, vertical side here. All right, so that's better. Okay, now the kind of post that we're going to put in the middle here. Let's see, well, we'll just create another cylinder and we'll use its creation node attributes. So increase the height, reduce the radius. So it fits in there snugly. If I want more refined movement of my virtual slider, I can click on that. Then I can just, just make it fit. That's good. It's a little bit too tall, I th think. And then just move it into place. So something like this. Then we'll just take this thing, duplicate it. So that was Shift D. And then we'll rotate, hold down J to snap rotate in 15 degree increments. Then we've got something like this. That's pretty good. So we're just going to delete the history, freeze the transformations on these, and let's just name these. So this is er, bot cap. Um, pillar pillar post and then top cap. Then we'll group these together. So by default it puts the group in the middle of the world. I'm just going to go to modify center pivot. I have a shortcut for it here too. And then control one to get out of that preview and I'll just take this and move it into position here. Let's just set this to negative five. Let's name this pillar. And we'll just duplicate this and set this to five. So it's over there. So that's all good. So it should be up a little higher didn't realize it was inside the model here. So just sitting on the surface. Okay, so that's pretty good. Save. And let's see. So now let's make the top piece. Now we want the holes in the top to align with the little dimples on the bottom here. So I'm going to reuse this piece that I have here, I think. So let's control one and face mode. And let me hold down shift and just switch to my front view temporarily. Just delete. Oh, I have to duplicate this first before I start deleting faces. So did I duplicate it? No, let's rename this bottom. stand and let's duplicate this and we'll call this top stand okay so let's hide bottom stand for the time being now we just have top stand here so again shift click in the middle here go to front view faces and I just want to delete nope I don't want to delete everything So I'm just trying to leave the top faces here. Might have to do a little bit of cleanup. So I still have these beveled edges around here. Let's see if I can select. Okay, I think that went all the way around. Yep, so if I click on this one, double click on the one beside it. Okay, those didn't go all the way around. So but we can still fix this. So it's good to reuse assets just because it's easier to 
do this and then to remake from scratch and you know that it will fit. So I'm going to get rid of these bevels here too for now. Now that I think about this, it probably would have been easier to do this at the beginning um, before I made it into the full bottom stand. But anyway, it's okay. So now we want to have these holes going all the way through. So we can probably just extrude this whole thing out. So go to the modeling toolkit, extrude, and adjust the thickness. Okay, so there we go. Put three on the keyboard, you can see it kind of collapses in on itself. So we have to do the same thing that we did before. Go around to these edges and just bevel this to give it some support edges around its structural edges. So we just have to make sure that we get everything selected. I'll do the insides of this separately, but I will do these corners at the same time. Just so the, the reason I'm doing them all together is so we get a, a nice bevel at the corner here. You'll see what I mean if I get in close. If I bevel now, then it deals with all these corners together. Let's reduce the fraction. Right, so we get a nice corner there. So now it holds its shape. These are okay, but we want these to hold their shape a little bit more too. You can see this one is being pulled out a little long. Actually, this is a bit of a mistake that I made here because I'm doing this after I brought this out this time. Um, this is not as circular as it could be, but we are going to decide that that is just fine. We could try and solve it by putting a multi-cut in here, but you can see we don't have a good edge loop going around, so it's kind of a pain. We could just do a cut like that through the whole thing, but when I go to three now, we get some ugly geometry here. So there, there would be ways that we could go in and solve it, but I'm just not going to worry about it right now. So let's just select these edges. So here I can double click and it will go around because these are in edge loops. And we'll bevel these. Let's see how this looks. That's pretty good. Yeah, so you can see it's a little bit wonky here. We could just correct it by moving those points in a little bit. Okay, so control one to get everything back out here. up here. Oh, I hid the other piece. And so now there's no real reason to connect these things in any way, like to try and physically connect them. So I've modeled these caps that have the little bevels in here. So they're going to fit together pretty nicely. So that's our stand made doesn't look too stable actually probably tip over but anyway um, let's just take all of these things and group them together and then we'll just call this demo stand okay I'm just going to delete its history and freeze transformations now let's make our pretty skinny test tubes so there are lots of different ways you could do this you could start with you know a cylinder and make it into the shape that you want. You could also draw the profile of this and revolve it around. Mm -hmm. But I think the simplest way to do it is just to make a cube and to stretch it out. So if we uh, shift right click and go to cube. So if I had three on the keyboard, a cube smooths into a sphere, right? So if we take this cube and just increase its height to get it kind of to the shape that we want. Okay, and we don't need this top face. So 
So if I look in one mode, it kind of looks like this. We're going to smooth this ourselves after, but let's just go into three mode. So now we have to cut an edge loop around here because we don't have enough support to hold the shape that we want. So we'll go into the multi-cut tool, hold down control, oops. And now you can see as we put in that edge loop, it helps us hold the shape. And if I tighten this up a little bit, let's move these. Now we're getting something. Now this is a little too big for our for our stand, but that's okay. We can fix that. We'll just scale it down a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to select these edges, hold down shift and extrude that up a bit. So in one mode you can see what we have going on here. And now what are we going to do? Um, let's just select the whole thing and extrude it outwards a little bit to give it some thickness. By three in the keyboard that's pretty good it's a little big but I'll just scale the whole thing down in a second I just double click on these faces here W I can extrude these out a little bit if I wanted to I don't know oops oops just trying to select this ring of faces. I guess I could just maybe scale and extrude that out a little bit just to give it a bit of a lip. And then we're pretty good. Now it looks wrong when it's this way in one mode, but in three mode, it smooths down nicely. Still a little too big. So if I go to scale, I don't want to change the scale in height. I just want to change it in X and Z. I can hold down this plane between X and Z and it won't adjust the height. It will just adjust the scale in those two dimensions. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with this. Save. So the last thing to do really is to make the stopper. So we'll just go to cylinder, a little big poly cylinder. So let's reduce the radius the height. Let's move it up here. It's a little short. And just go into vertex mode, taper it down a little bit, and then let's just bevel these edges. This is not really great topology in the corner here, um, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. Bevel this. If I hit three on the keyboard now, uh, it's not really quite holding its edge as well as I would like. So I just hit T on the keyboard to bring back that controller as the last active tool. Okay, that's a little better in smooth mode. And then we'll just put it down in here. Oh, I guess it has to be a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now this test tube, I'm actually gonna smooth it for real. I'm gonna throw in an extra edge loop in here so it's just a little more equally spaced too. It's not really that essential, but just to be a little tidier. And then if I go to mesh, smooth, Maybe add two divisions, then it's going to hold that shape. We can still hit three in the keyboard and it will smooth the smooth model. So it'll be nice and smooth. If you do that too much, though, it eats up a lot of memory. So that's pretty good. Let's name these things. So this is test tube and this is stopper. Don't know. And we'll just group these together and we'll remember to actually delete their history and freeze their transformation individually and rename the group TT. 
Now I want to add a little fluid inside here, so I'm just going to select the test tube, control one, so this is the only thing we see. And I'm going to duplicate this model. It's actually a little more, actually using the cube has left a bit of a square shape here. Or maybe it's just my, no, yeah, it definitely has. Maybe it would have been better to start with the cylinder. Could have gone through sort of the same technique. Anyway, that's fine. Um, so if we take this test tube and duplicate it, and then we're going to, on this, I'm going to hide the initial one. And then this one, let's just select these faces down right at the base. And if we shift greater than arrow, we can grow our selection till it's something like that. Maybe one more. And now if I hold down shift and drag over the whole thing, it will reverse my selection. And then I'll just hit delete. And I'm left with just this inner part. Now you can see it's inside out, it's black on the outside. So I'll just select this and go to Mesh Display Reverse. And then I want to seal off the top. Oh yeah, this, it's actually quite square. I think if I did this again, I would not start with a cube. I would maybe start with a low res cylinder to get the similar effect. But anyway. So I'll just select this, R, Shift, something like this, and then Control, right click to vertices, Shift, right click, merge vertices. Then I need a little more. Just throwing another edge loop in there so it'll fit a little more tightly. And let's, while we have it easily selected, I'm just going to put a new material on here. And we'll do, of course, an Arnold standard surface. Delete the history. And we'll name the standard surface liquid demo. And let's just use the preset of. Um, Honey. Okay, so control one, unhide this. So these two things are floating a little bit. Oops. Let's just move my whole test tube down a bit. So now let's just put some materials on here. So up here, AI standard surface, of course. Change it to the preset for rubber, Ballot stopper, demo, material. Just make this a bit darker. And then this one, same thing, material. We'll just use the glass preset. And then for the whole stand, We'll just add a new material and we'll use Arnold's plastic preset, uh, but it's this kind of blue color. So I'm just going to change this to be a little closer to white. And then the plastic uses subsurface scattering. So we will also reduce that to white. So let's take a look and see how this is. Let's just put a plane on the ground. And render. That's not it. Okay, there's something interesting happening here. Um, it looks like the object is poking out from inside. The liquid objects so I think we probably just have to scale it down a little bit yeah so I just scaled it down so it wasn't perfectly overlapping the inside surface of the of the test tube 
This is actually not really a good physical way to do something like this. I should probably cut out the faces from the inside of the glass. Um, so we just have it going through the refracting surfaces. But I think it should be all right. It should be good enough to do it this way. I'm just going to go into four mode. It's it's going to push it down a little bit. So it's not right at the level of the the edge there. It's kind of hard to see this glass, so I'm just going to go into the glass preset that we have. And in the transparency, maybe just give it a little bit of slight color. Just so we can see it, the test tube a little more clearly. And if we want more of these test tubes, of course, we can just select this and duplicate it and just move it over. And then we can shift D to do the same thing. Select this test tube. D, move it over, holding down X and then shift D. So we'll have five that are exactly the same, but you could go in and tweak these. So that's just 30 minutes of goofing around and uh, getting something that is pretty good, but not perfect. I made some errors, I think, in um, making the test tubes and all that kind of stuff. But if this was sort of set dressing and, you know, just sitting on the bench back here, that's not bad for half an hour's work. You could use this in lots of different projects and you could tweak it to make it a little bit better. I do think my... My rack is a little unstable, though. It's probably the base should be a bit wider. Could always change that if we wanted to. Um, so if I just select this, go to vertices, select these vertices, go to symmetry object Z, just move these out a little bit. That looks a little bit better. Yeah, so that looks like it's less likely to fall over. There we go. So just try some speed modeling, try to make something and uh, whatever you make, if you do a good enough job with it, something you can add to your library of bits and pieces you can pull out for any project. Okay, thanks.